Boy, listen to these voices out here. It's a nice warm day out here, June the 6th. Got good music to start off with there. Feel the presence of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Everybody happy to be here? Amen. All right. It'll be a great day to worship the Lord, right? Every day. Our Sunday school class is starting the, the book of Job. And we're just on the very first part of it. And it says, through everything there, Job worshiped the Lord. Hmm. We can do that, right? All right, let's get started here, Brother Isaiah. All right. Once again, good morning there, dear friends. Uh, we are going to start singing his praises and giving him our worship. And we're going to start with hymn 28. So if you all please stand in honor of our Lord and Savior. We're going to give him the glory now by singing, To God Be the Glory. <clears throat>
Amen. Who has a testimony about how God has taken care of you in the last week, month, or even at a point in time in life? Just a quick praise to the Lord. How has God taken care of you? <clears throat> Went to the doctor, got a prednisone, and I had an iron itch. Amen. <laughs> Amen. God's going to take care of you, Miss Jean. Amen. Someone else? Yes. I was in a car accident this past week, rear ended, and um, I just got a little bit sore, but the other two cars were demolished that were behind me. Yeah. I was sitting at a traffic light, and so I just got a little sore. No injuries other than, you know, a little sore, but um, so I say God took care of me. Amen. 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 Maybe maybe one more. God we'll talk. takes care of us through sin and the rain and the sunshine. He does. Provides what we need in season and out of season. Yes. John? Well, I was just going to say, Debbie was talking about traffic, and, and so uh, when we got ready to leave the rodeo the other night, we only had one taillight that worked on the trailer, and so well, we got home safely. Oh, well. And Tony was my escort. He was behind me. There you go. He took care of that. <laughs> <laughs> we got home safely. Yes. God will take care of us. He sure will. You know, it would be amiss if we did not recognize that today is an anniversary. It's an anniversary of an event that took place 77 years ago, June the 6th, D-Day. And on D-Day, we saw the Allied forces rally from England to go over into Europe so that they could begin the push that set forth freedom then for an occupied world and set the tone for who we are still as a people of God in America today. Over 175,000 soldiers and sailors, marines, paratroopers, and more. Men and women alike, women serving on the home front, women serving in uh, Britain, American ladies in uniform, men in uniform going off to battle. Over 9,000 airplanes. How many ships was it, John? 6, Over 6,000 ships. All a part of the largest amphibious landing and air uh, you know, event that took place. And that was 77 years ago today. We are here worshiping, and I'm not trying to be trite, we are worshiping in a land of freedom. We are worshiping in English. We are worshiping in a place where we can praise the Lord and, and because of something that happened 77 years ago today. Amen. And so, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, Father God in heaven, we recognize just our total need for you. And we confess, Father, that without you, we truly would be in just terrible ways. And so, God, as we confess our need to you, help us and walk with us. And, Lord, we remember this anniversary, how so many years ago, Lord, there were those that over 6,000 that lost their life that day, thousands wounded, and then throughout the battles that enraged, the battles before, the battles after, but yet all of that, Father, we stand here today to praise and worship you and remember their sacrifice and willingness to go. Farm boys and city kids and those that one week were out playing sandlot baseball or studying at the university, now in uniform, fighting. We thank you, Lord, for this anniversary, the solemnness of it. There are other anniversaries that those in our midst have celebrated, Lord, it's this last week, the loss of a loved one or another key event that has happened in life that is not forgotten, many times remembered with joy, sometimes with heartache. Lord, for upcoming anniversaries, for the celebration of wedding anniversaries, the celebration of birthdays, and Lord, it's just the joy of life because joy isn't dependent upon our circumstances. Joy is dependent upon our walk with you, Lord. You give us our joy. And because of that joy, Lord, regardless of how we remember some things, we have a great faith and a foundation built on Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And so we praise you, Lord, on this day. 
for how you have taken care of us, continue to do so over our land, over our state, over our church, and over our hearts. We commit to you in the name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated this morning. We are blessed to hear the story of one of our own again today. And so Russell Walker is going to share his story this morning. And Brother Russell, we invite you, sir. I remember the war years. Uh, my older brother and I, we were, uh, let's say, uh, prior to our teen years, and our contribution was to uh, salvage the scrap steel from dumps and things like that in the area. Uh, my father was a steel worker and his contribution was to uh, transport the steel by the uh, high line to what's called an open hearth furnace. And I was uh, born in the uh, middle of the Great Depression and uh, it was the hottest year on record. Uh, I had an old brother, like I mentioned, he was a year and a half older than I and uh, I had uh, two younger sisters uh, prior to World War II. The older brother and I, we did a lot of a lot of things together, mostly good. I mentioned the scrap steel work. Uh, the proceeds from that paid for uh, two new bicycles. Uh, they were called Elgin's from Sears and Roebuck. And we lived in a uh, suburban type area, worked in gardens. Uh, we raised uh, uh, vegetables in our playtime. We dug caves in the back side of a, a bluff that faced the Missouri River. Uh, and it was early, easy digging because it was what's called a, uh, uh, a wind uh, deposited soil called uh, L O E S S, LUS, or LERS as one professor said, and uh, in early March of, of um, nineteen forty seven, the older brother uh, he was killed by a car uh, my family had not been church members but subsequently, uh, my two sisters and I, we attended a nearby Baptist church in the area of Northwest uh, Independence, Missouri. And the uh, Baptist church is, is still there. It's called Mount Washington Baptist. Uh, and my siblings uh, and the younger ones, uh, they attended there for, for many years after that. And I always wondered, you know, why my brother was killed. And of course, it, it, it was a great loss to me and my family. I always enjoyed, enjoyed gardening and, and the, the farm life. I had relatives in west central Missouri, uh, inside the Kansas line uh, in Missouri and also in northeast Missouri. And part of the time in the summers, I would go and, and visit those for, uh, folks and, and enjoy the farm life. Uh, the West Central people, they were, they were churchgoers, they were Christians, and I attended uh, revivals with them when revivals were a big thing back in the day. For a few weeks in the summers, like I said, I was able to visit with cousins in these two areas. In 1951, I worked for a family up in uh, northeast Missouri and went to high school and worked as a hired hand for those 
folks uh, graduated from school up there, got two uh, first year scholarships, attended University of Missouri, and I infrequently attended the uh, Missouri Baptist uh, Church there on campus. And after marriage to my wife, I worked in geology and mining operations in 18 states in Northwest United States, Southwest United States, Northeast United States, uh, here in central part of the country and also in the Southeast. And we lived in Missouri for four years in the late 70s and our kids attended the Baptist church in that small town. And subsequently, they became church members in other areas where they settled. Uh, a few years later, we were able to buy our own small farm, uh, six, five and a half, six miles southwest here. And our lives have stabilized from all that moving. And in Easter Sunday in 1996, I started attending uh, church services here at, at Grandview. And uh, also studying the Bible on Wednesday at the church and now our Zoom, Zoom meetings. And admittedly, I'm a slow learner, but try to be consistent in learning and application. Uh, several years ago, Brother Jim Smith and I, uh, we talked about salvation. And at that point, I asked that Jesus Christ be my uh, Lord and Savior. Three years ago, I called on the Lord from, for help when I cut an oak tree and it fell on, on, uh, on my leg. A uh, nearby member, uh, neighbor jacked the tree up and uh, released me. Bruises and cuts uh, to the head, but no broken bones. I was fortunate uh, to call on the Lord and had a neighbor who was able to come and, and help me. I have appreciated being one of the church family here at Grandview. I'm able to uh, share ideas and solutions and events and problems uh, with others here. Received help and advice from folks like Lee Hudson, uh, Tony McKnight, Bill Sheets, Larry Bishop, Larry Jones, Matt Roll, Del Finley, Roger McCoy, brother uh, Phil Dooley, John Gray, and brother Don Combs, and others. And my, my favorite is the 23rd third Psalm, and I'll recite that to you, read that to you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beneath the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear, fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare, prepare a table before me in, in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Sundays, the uh, nominated committee is in the process of giving opportunity for us and how and where we will be serving in our church life in the year ahead. And we had talked about how on today and next Sunday we're going to pass out the nominating forms, and these are an opportunity for you to print your name and begin marking down where you sense that the Lord is saying in the year ahead, I'd like to work here, or serve in this way, or however that would be. And so we're going to take a couple of moments this morning 
ask you to go ahead and fill out your sheet this morning, and we're going to collect those here in a couple of minutes or so. If you are not ready to make, you know, make any statements, then that's understandable. But uh, we'll be doing this today and next Sunday so that we have uh, a good representation of where you and where all of us are saying, Lord, here's what next year looks like for us. So Nancy, I didn't think about that. But could we have a little background music while we're filling those out? Yeah. <laughs> song to sit down for us. So if you please stand up again. We're going to sing 104, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound.
please be seated.